um, and, and stuff. So as soon as worship is over today, if you would help us just stack the chairs, make piles of six. We're not, we can't move them yet because there's a lot of stuff going on over there during the week. Um, but stack the chairs now. And then Saturday, did we say nine or ten? Ten. Ten o'clock on Saturday, if you're available and can help us set up the Family Life Center for worship next week, that would be great. And so, um, so that's just what's coming up. And so it's, it is good to be here this morning. I just, it's been fun to listen to the, just the chatter, the fellowship that's taking place today. It's cold outside, but it's not cold in here. And so we're glad of that, thankful for the many, many blessings that God gives to us. Will you stand with me? And I want to begin with prayer um, and just pray over this, this time that we have to get together today. Father, we thank you and we praise you that we have this amazing opportunity to just gather together. Um, we haven't all been able to see each other for a couple of weeks because of the weather that you have blessed us with. And, uh, and Father, thank you that we have today, that we can just be here. Thank for Jeff being able to be here from Camp Sunshine. And, uh, this, you gave him safety here. Father, we just thank you for um, your many, many blessings. Father, today we want to worship who you are. And we want to celebrate the fact that there is no other name given unto men by which we can be saved that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And so, Father, it is your name that we want to celebrate. It is your name that we want to give honor and glory to. Father, help us to just have hearts ready to come before you and to give glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Only name that matters to me. 
kind of shift gears a little bit and begin to just prepare our mind, our heart, our soul for the time that we just celebrate the fact that Jesus, yes, is the name that saves, but it is how he saves us. It is by his death, his burial, and resurrection. So we're going to sing a couple of songs before we go into our uh, communion time. And so let's just sing these. Let these songs be a time to prepare your own heart for the time of gathering and taking of the Lord's Supper.
did Jesus go? It's because God so loved the world that he gave. And as kids, we probably, many of us in this room, learned the song, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, For the Bible Tells Me So. But it's like we are, need to constantly, I think, be reminding ourselves that we are loved. We are his children. Jesus loves us so much that he died on the cross. And as we continue to prepare for communion, let's sing this song. Good morning. Good morning. As most of you guys know, I love history. I've got history books at home, some going back to my junior high years. And I've got some in my shop in the garage. I've got some in bookcases. I've got some on my headboard. I've got some on my nightstand. And there's some on the floor by my nightstand. Yeah, she's. 
Anyway, Denise will tell me, when are you going to clean that stuff up? I said, stuff? That's my books. I need to know where they're at. And she's even accused me of hoarding. And you know, hoarding is stuff. You know, it's not educational stuff like history books. <laughs> but anyway, when I think of history in our area, the Mormon Trail is probably one of the things that really pops into my mind. During the years of 1849 to 1855, these people, uh, the Mormons, traveled from Nauvoo, Illinois, to the Great Salt Lake in Utah to escape religious persecution. And during their journey west, they passed through this area, a little bit to the north here. Uh, these poor people, the, these pioneers, they couldn't afford a big wagon and stuff like you see on TV. They bought or constructed what were called hand carts. These simple two-wheeled wagons were pulled by humans instead of horses, mules, or oxen. It has been said that just the church property were hauled in these carts. I didn't know that until not too long ago. It was just the church property. And any personal property had to be carried uh, by the guys walking on their backs or carried in their hand or whatever. Boy, I was thinking traveling through here on a hot day, boy, wouldn't they like to throw those uh, burdens on their back in that uh, cart so they wouldn't have to carry it anymore. Imagine the carts being the church today, the body of Christ and his followers, and the carried bundles being the burden of sin that we all carry with us. Wouldn't it be wonderful I could turn this page? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could take those sins we carry on our backs and get the load off of our shoulders? Allow me to read the scriptures uh, from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, where Jesus speaks these words to his followers. Come to all who are labor, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, that's from the ESV. When I first read the word yoke, this eye for devotion came on my mind, for a yoke is something used to pull a, a heavy burden. And when I read the words, come to me all who labor and are heavenly laden, I will give you rest. I thought we, we have the promise of taking the heavy burden of sin off us and into the wagon to be carried by the sacrifice that Christ did for us on the cross. Let us give thanks for this while we partake of the loaf and the cup this morning. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for sending your only Son to take the burden of sin from us and to carry it, the rest, and carry it for the rest of our journey so we can reach our destination of eternal life. And for this we give thanks. In Jesus' name, amen.
let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we are so grateful, so blessed to be able to meet in our church again and, and enjoy the fellowship and, and uh, Lord, learn more about your grace, your glory, and, and your love for us. Father, we just are blessed beyond measure. Beyond measure. We thank you, Father, for those many, many blessings. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give back a portion of that of which you have given us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I just wanted an awkward moment there for a second. <laughs> Before I forget, because I will forget, hey, mustard seeds, you guys can leave and go have a lesson with whoever's in charge of mustard seeds and have some energies get out. I know they need some energies out. For those of you who may have forgot who I am, I'm Augie. I'm the associate pastor here. It's been a while. It's been a while. I'm so excited for you guys to meet a guy that I've never seen not smile. But before we do that, we're going to watch a video. So roll that beautiful bean footage. You know, one of the taglines that's on all of our stuff is the idea of making memories and changing lives. So our goal is to really help kids make positive memories that as they grow up through life, they can look back on. From campers to staff, everyone's just silly and free to just be kids and be themselves and be who God made them to be. They meet the kids where they're at. And they just really get down on their level and incorporate them into the stuff that they're doing. For kids to see that grown-ups can be goofy, but you know, disciplined and structured at the same time, it's just such a great environment. It's one of the best weeks of our summers, for sure. next to you and give him a big high five. Hey, would you guys be awesome and welcome my friend Jeff to the stage, please. So, I, I've been a minister here almost, almost a year for part-time times, and when I 
had thought of a mission trip, I had like, what is a weird thing that we can go do? And I was like, hey, Jeff, do you guys want a bunch of teenagers that you have to keep track of too? <laughs> and his response was, I, Jeff, uh, can you tell them who you are and what exactly Camp Sunshine is? Absolutely, absolutely. First, just thank you guys for, for giving me this morning to share what God is doing at Camp Sunshine. Um, it is a passion of mine and my wife's, um, a calling that we are living out. Um, and it has just been a journey to watch the Lord do what he is doing through camp. And so hopefully this morning um, you'll be edified and you'll just hear what God is doing um, in our midst. Um, and then I'm um, exciting for you guys to be a part of that as your youth come and participate in it. Um, yeah, Camp Sunshine basically started as a day camp. My wife grew up just south of Lincoln, Nebraska, and we met in college. We lived out in the D.C. area for a while, and then we felt strongly called to move back to Lincoln and start a camp. Now, real quick, how many of you guys have ever been to camp? Like, you went as a kid. So you guys know, you know camp. You know that's, like, God shows up at camp, and he impacts people at camp. I never went to camp as a kid. I had no idea what camp was about until I was in college. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk more about that story as things go on. But as we moved back to Lincoln, um, we had this crazy vision. We were, we were really encouraged with this, this phrase. And I can't remember, maybe it was Bill Bright, the first guy I had heard say this, but um, have a vision so big that unless God intervenes, it will fail. And that really inspired my wife and I to say, you know what, we feel like God's calling us to Lincoln to, to do something with kids. There's a lot of kids in the area. But we're on an old farm. It was my wife's grandparents' farm. It was homesteaded back in the 1800s. Um, it's been in the family for years. But her grandpa retired from farming the same month I was born. So for 30 years, this old farm just sat falling apart. And we showed up on grounds, and we looked at the old barn and everything that's all overgrown, and we thought, perfect place for kids. Let's do this. <laughs> so we thought, this is a huge vision. Um, and so we, we started sharing with people, um, you know, what, what the plan was, where we, we felt like God was calling. And we started, we had 15 kids that showed up our first week of camp. Most of those were our nieces and nephews. And we always say that they had to come because Christmas would have been awkward if they didn't show up for camp. But they came and we loved on them in Jesus' name. And they had an amazing experience. And the following week, um, that 15 kind of grew to about 20 and the next week, we were up to about 24, 25. Um, and then we got connected with um, an urban youth ministry in Lincoln, and they brought some kids down. So, you know, we had about 98 to 100 kids our first summer. We thought, okay, that's about, that's what we can handle. Let's do this. But God wasn't done. He says, no, there are more kids that need to hear about Jesus. So I'm going to send more to you. And so every year for the next few years, um, more and more kids kept coming to camp, and we're thinking, we got to find more staff, we need more help, we got to expand our, our facilities and all this stuff, and we're a day camp, so everything is outdoors-based. We, we put up a party tent. There's no structure, so when it rained, all these kids would come into my living room, and we would push all the furniture out, and we would push the, you know, the, everything out into the, the porch, and all the kids would sit in the living room, and we would, we would do camp activities in the rain. Um, well, God has been faithful, and this next summer, we are um, projected to, to reach over 2,300 campers from Lincoln and the surrounding areas. And so we're hiring 50 staff members this summer to come out. Um, we have another, you know, probably 50 or 60 high school youth that will come and volunteer throughout different times throughout the summer. Um, and even in the midst of that, as, as God has blessed what has happened with our children, um, we got a phone call one day about four or five years ago from another camp nearby, and they say, hey, uh, we have a camp property about 20 minutes from you guys. Do you want it? And we're like, what's wrong with it? You know? <laughs> so we went and toured, and we had just been praying. We, we've been watching these little kids grow up through, through camp, and we've been praying, saying, okay, Lord, these kids are growing up. Um, we need some programs for our teens now, and what does that look like? And we, we didn't go pursue anything. We just says, Lord, when you're ready, open some doors so we can continue to minister to these older kids. And that's when that phone call came and says, hey, we have an overnight facility we want to give you, 40 acres, two dorm buildings, a big rec facility, and we want to give it to you under one condition, that you use it for the gospel. We said, done. Deal. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. So we've, we've been able to operate um, two, two facilities, um, and we don't know where the Lord's taken it. Um, we tell our staff all the time, I, I've never done this before. I'm not an expert. We are just following the Lord as he opens doors, and we're going to step through them and just see, see what happens. And, and lives are being changed. So it's a little that's bit awesome. about, about camp and our history, I guess. Yeah, that's so. awesome. So I know you, and I've known you for way too long. 
<laughs> but tell them how we met. Maybe you may, maybe you remember. Maybe you don't. Well, Augie was squirrely. Yes. And <laughs> was. We, still is, maybe? Yeah. Uh, it was about 10 years ago, I think. You were saying, what, two, 2009? 2009, I was an intern. Um, so. I was working part-time at church in Lincoln. Um, camp was growing, so I was kind of part-time there, part-time at church. And um, we brought this guy on to do some crazy stuff with kids' ministry. Um, so we kind of got to know each other there. And then over the years, of partnered on different projects. He's done some video work for us out at the camp. And yeah, yeah right on. been a decade. So... I, I can keep friends, y'all. I have, I have friends beyond. Just like, but the important thing is we did work together. We worked on some video stuff, and, and I got to firsthand see what it's like to be on, at camp and, and see Jeff. And I actually, when I was there doing video work, his wife was uber pregnant. Like, she looked like a balloon that you could pop. You just, and that smile. I'll tell that her you had, said that. <laughs> <laughs> She'll love that. But that smile you see there wasn't gone. It was always there. And so that was always an effect on me in the ministry that I've done is like, no matter how bad it is, you can still smile. And that's really great to see because that's what you feed the kids every day is a smile, even if, you know, it's raining out and everything gets can canceled. Now, since camp started, which was 2007, so. What has changed on the campgrounds since then? It, a lot's changed since I've been there, y'all. I mean, a ton of stuff. So when we started, you know, like we said, it was this, this old farm. Um, and we thought, well, we need a shaded place. So we, we thought, well, let's, let's buy a little party tent. So it was probably smaller than the, the space here. It was a, you know, kind of a, I don't know, 20 by 30 maybe. And um, we outgrew that tent and we outgrew my house, my living room. And so we started praying about a facility. And so um, that barn structure you saw in the video was a huge blessing. It was our first kind of campaign of saying, okay, Lord, we need, we, we need a place where we can put kids because we want them to be safe. We know they need to be at camp in order to hear the gospel. But if they're going to be here, we have a responsibility to take care of them. So we, we started uh, pursuing this this indoor facility. So now we have a, a place to take them when they rain, when it rains. Um, the crazy thing is the amount of time, and you guys know, I mean, it sounds like you've been through a capital campaign. It, it takes time. You got to raise the funds. It takes time to build. By the time we got our structure built, we were already at capacity for it. <laughs> we thought, oh boy, here we go. It just keeps, keeps going. And so, you know, over the years, we've, we've been um, doing some strategic planning for our next steps and stuff. And so we finally were able to build a swimming pool for kids. We've got a lot of different water inflatables we've added to the, the program. Uh, but we run kindergarten through um, junior high at our day camp program. And so, you know, keeping a variety of activities and locations for those kids to be engaged with and, and having fun is, it's a fun challenge to have, you know. It's my, my job is to play with kids because when kids connect with you on a fun level, it's, it's amazing how you get their ear on a, a heart level and you can kind of really kind of go deep and stuff. True, very true. That's really good. I forgot the next question. But I really like what you had to say about connecting with them on the fun level because that's very true in life. Is if you can connect with someone on a fun level, you can really connect with their heart. Um, oh, yeah, the next question. What is something that drives you at camp? Like, what is something that continually gets you going? I mean, you do this not just one week. You do this throughout the summer. Ten weeks now? Ten weeks. Imagine doing something every, every week, Monday through Friday and Saturday mornings. <laughs> yeah, so um, what, what drives me? What drives um, you? I'm going to stand up and pace. That's yes, okay. that's fine. I pace all the time. They, they're, used um, to they're used to it. Good, good. Well, I guess... Before I, I, I guess I share what, what drives me, I guess it, it kind of comes back to, you know, like I said, I never grew up going to camp. I didn't know the power of what a camp experience could have if it's done the right way. I've been doing it long enough. Um, I've talked to enough people. I understand that maybe even people in this room, your camp experience wasn't something you look back on fondly and say, wow, that was really good. Some people are like, I survived that, never do it again. Um, and that's definitely not the, the heart that we take into it. But it, it reminds me back my first summer. So I was a freshman in college, didn't want to go home and, and work fast food. So I was like, what can I do? I ended up at this camp. Um, and it was a wilderness camp um, out in Maryland. And I had a group of about fourth and fifth grade boys. And I don't know where this idea came from. We did a lot of hiking through the woods. But one day we were walking along the trail and I sent the boys kind of ahead of me. And I got in the back and in my pocket, I had a Tootsie Roll. Uh, kind of a, a long one, and so I, I opened it up in the back, and it was, just, it was warm from being in my pocket. It was real moldable, kind of like Play-Doh, I guess. So while we're walking, I'm pinching off little pieces, and I'm just rolling them in the little balls in my hand. And um, 
So we're hiking down the, the trail, and at uh, an opportune moment, I kneel down, and I, I put a pile of my Tootsie Roll balls on this leaf on the trail. And I go, oh my goodness, guys, check this out. Now, these are fourth and fifth grade boys. They're thinking, sweet, what is this? They come over, and lo and behold, they see what to them looks like a large pile of, of deer droppings. And they're thinking, whoa, look at that. And so we were kind of laughing about that. I says, well, guys, you know, we're out here. Let, let's have a nature lesson. So I gather them around, and we kneel down around the, the little leaf. And um, I says, you know, every, can, everybody poops. So I guess we can say that in church. But, you know, deer do too. But the thing about deer is you can, you can tell what they've eaten by what comes out, obviously. And they're like, well, this is kind of a weird nature lesson. And then I grabbed one, and I picked it up. And I'm holding it, and they're kind of looking like, you just touched that. That's gross. And I'm like, yeah, so, you know, this deer, he probably lives locally. He probably hikes down this trail all the time, whatever. And I, and I sniffed it, and I'm like, ooh, it smells like, you know, he may have been eating some of the berry bush and kind of going on with it. I says, but the only way to really know what they've eaten is, is to just try it. And I popped it in my mouth. And I wish I could say that my boys chuckled like that. They looked at me, and they went, oh. I mean, it got quiet, faces dropped, and I'm just chewing away. I'm like, wow, that's really good. And um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not even hardly done chewing, and some guys, are they're just white. And I turned to a little boy next to me. His name's Jonathan. He had been with me all summer. He was one of those boys that just came every week to camp. Um, and I just reached out to him, and I go, here, try one. And I was expecting him to be like, Ugh. Jonathan looked at me, looked at my hand, grabbed one and popped it in his mouth without hesitation. Yes. And I thought, whoa. And he starts chewing it and then he chuckles. And he's like, oh, it's chocolate. Uh -huh. So all the boys started laughing and so we passed around all this. Didn't give much thought to that. I mean, we did it. We laughed. It was a fun memory that we made. Um, and we went on with, with the rest of the summer. Um, as time would have it, I was not able to return to camp that following year. I never thought I would be doing camp ever again, actually. I loved my experience, but I thought, that was cool. Been there, done that. I'm not doing it. Um, but the Lord directs our steps. <laughs> and so I ended up following him back to that camp two years later. I arrive for um, orientation and training, and I get there in the evening, and I'm walking up to the church building that the camp is behind. And lo and behold, the first people that walk out of the door is Jonathan and his parents. And I'm walking up, and he walks out, and he just lights up like a light bulb. He runs over to me, Jeff, gives me a big old hug. He's like, do you remember when you made me eat deer poop? And I'm like, looking at his mom, and she's like, what is going on? I'm like, there's a story there, I'll tell you about it, it's fine. Um, but he went on to say, he says, Jeff, he's like, I trusted you so much. I, you know, I ate that because I trusted you. You could have told me to do anything, and I would have done it. And it was in that moment, two years later, that I realized the power of, of that camp experience. Here's a kid I spent days with. We played together. We laughed together. We, we learned to shoot bows and arrows and do all the fun stuff that we do at camp. But we connected so much that there was a tremendous amount of trust that he had in me. And I, it dawned on me the, the power of that trust. And I can use that to just do silly little things, or I can capitalize on that trust that can be built so quickly with kids. And I can use that to influence his life and direct him towards the cross. And, you know, as he's got issues going on in life, or he's got questions or concerns, you know what? He's going to come to the crazy guy that he connected with, who made him eat deer poop, and he's going to say, hey, I'm struggling with this. How, how should I handle this? Gosh, he's, he trusts me. In that moment now, I can say, oh, just do what your friends are doing, or I can say, hey, let's, let's pray about it. Let's see what, let's see what the Lord has for you, um, and let's dig into that. And so, for me, that is the power of camp. I'm not, like, fun happens, but fun for us is a tool, and I'm excited to provide experiences for kids that combine and connect a, a counselor and a camper in a way that within a few short days, that kid is asking questions, and they want to be like their counselor. They want to know about the Jesus that they talk about all the time, and we don't have to ram the gospel and force it at them because they're so willing and hungry, and they want it. So that's kind of my, my drive for camp and to yeah. create an environment that, you know, like we said in the video, that makes memories with kids, but it ultimately changes their lives because they, they want what, what the gospel has. That's really cool. Anyway. That's the first time I've heard that story, and that's amazing. <laughs> There might be Tootsie Rolls on Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> um, so can you explain to us what a normal day at Camp Sunshine would look like 
So the, the people here might know what the kids are going to experience when they go. Yeah, so um, we, we tell our staff it's day camp with overnight hours, pretty much. So we arrive, our, our leadership team, we get there at 6.45 in the morning, Monday through Friday, um, and we spend that first 15 minutes praying for the day, kind of going over announcements, um, just figuring out details and logistics. At 7 o'clock, all the staff show up. We have morning devo devotionals with our entire staff. Um, and then they break off into their different program groups based on their ages. And then as early as 7.30, kids start coming. The, the main camp day is 9 to 4.30. But we have families that, you know, mom and dad need to, to get off to work. And so we provide an extended camp program. So these are kids that we get bonus time with coming as early as 7.30. Um, camp day starts at 9. Every day starts with a large group assembly like you saw in the video. And, and that's an opportunity to get kids out of their comfort zone. Um, we, we talk to the kids about the idea of a cool card, and um, you know, er, we all have them. Um, some are bigger than others, but it's, it's issued at birth. We all, we grow up and we get this, this cool card, and it's what, you know, as, as we grow up, we learn that when we're in an environment that we want to sh shelter ourselves, we just hold up our cool card and be like, oh, I'm, I'm cool. I'm just going to hang out over here. And when you get to junior high, that cool card's like huge, because you, you, flash that everywhere. I don't have to do anything that's make me uncool. Um, and then it kind of grows and you get into, you know, high school. And then usually by the time you're a junior and senior, you've lost it because you just do whatever. It's crazy. But we help these kids understand, like, let's not let our, our fear of others get in the way of doing things that are fun. And so assembly is kind of designed to break down those walls. You know, if, if we can get a kid, I mean, think about the power of this. We, we do a lot of songs and dances and different things like that with our kids in assembly. If I can get a, a kid you know, fifth, sixth grade, whatever, acting silly, singing and dancing and doing all this kind of stuff with their friends around them, and they're not worried about what other people think about them, and they cultivate a, a continual habit of, I'm going to have fun, and I'm going to be who God made me to be, and I'm not worried what other people think about me. I've now helped a child build the life skills that they can go to school, and they can talk about their faith and they're not worried about what other people think about them. People might think they look silly or goofy. That's fine. I'm mean, this is who I am. This is what Jesus did in my life, you know? And so even something crazy like singing and dancing, we, we try to utilize it as a way to build into kids. So we start with assembly, and then the day is full of rota rotations, activities, um, off-road go-karts and archery and swimming and nature activities and everything. Um, and we do have a, what we call our Bible discovery time. And what that time is, is it's an ex experiential time with the Bible. Um, it has ranged over the years from different things, but it is a time where the person leading that activity, they're not just teaching a Sunday school lesson, but it's being taught in a way that it's, it's kind of a, a character who is, you know, presenting these lessons in sort of, of a, a, a theatrical way, that the kids are experiencing the lessons that are being taught, as opposed to just hearing about them, um, they're kind of living those out and experiencing it. So we, we'll go through that day. Um, kids leave at about 4.30, and again, we have extended camp until 6. So we've got kids at potentially 7.30 to 6. Talk about an amount of time to really invest in kids. Um, and then they go home. And it's like that Monday through Thursday. Friday night, we have an overnight camp out, and the kids have the opportunity to stay overnight. Camp out in teepees and tents, um, all that kind of fun stuff. Get that camp experience. Um, we have some awesome bonfire times with them. And then Saturday morning, we have a big parent breakfast. So as opposed to just coming and picking up your kids, we invite moms, dads, siblings, grandparents, anybody to come and have pancakes with us. We started that with our 15 kids at two picnic tables. And the families that did it loved it. They're like, this is great. You should never stop doing this. And so now we haven't. And we have basically actually built a, a little building that we have four griddles in. And we serve between four and 600 people every Saturday morning now for pancake breakfast. And it's just a community time where what? families come <laughs> and they get to hang out with their kids and hear the stories of, of what um, they've learned at camp and what they've experienced. So yeah, really, really awesome. That's a lot of pancakes. Stro That's a lot of pancakes. <laughs> Lots of pancakes. <laughs> so does your father-in-law still help with My that? My father-in-law does that. Yeah, it's Papa's He's Pancake awesome. Palace. Papa's Pancake <laughs> and Nana Snack Shack. Those two things. I remember that a lot. That's awesome. If you guys can't tell, he's a little passionate about camp, and I love that. I love that. I love to hear about that. Uh, I'm going to ask you one more question, and this is more on a personal level. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? My story. Well, You've told some of it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, I, I grew up in North Central Indiana. Um, I grew up in, you know, what I guess you could call a, a Christian home. I was really young, I think, when my parents kind of, who had walked away a little while, come back to, to the Lord. And so I grew up going to church. I grew up, you know, knowing all of the, the right answers, um, knowing everything, I guess, in the head. Um, but, it, you know, as, as life goes on and you grow, you kind of get to that point where it's like, you know, this needs to be real for me. This needs to be a decision I made. And, um, you know, junior highs or high school, probably every other Sunday was one of those come to Jesus moments where it's like, okay, I want to give my life to Christ again. I'm not sure, you know, and just kind of wrestling with doubts. Um, but then as I got to college, um, I really, I think, is when I, I really started owning my faith and really walking with the Lord and, and letting him, I guess, live and work through me. I think it's, I think one of the reasons I'm passionate about camp is because I think that's an, an environment for me where I really... I think, heard from the Lord and where I, I really connected with him. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I love for our staff at camp as well, is that each person, I believe, and we tell this to the kids at camp, has been, you know, to steal from our pastor back in Lincoln, you know, e each one was, is made on purpose for a purpose. And we believe each one of those kids has got unique things about them. And a lot of times the things that, you know, we struggle with and think are quirks about us, you know, for me, you know, growing up, I had a lot of insecurities. I had a lot of things that I felt like I couldn't do good enough or I wasn't doing the right way. And those build insecurities into life. But when you get to a point and you recognize God's giving you those experiences and he's giving you those abilities because he has a plan to use that in other people's lives, like that is freeing. Um, and it's, it's not condemning, I, I guess to say. And so... Um, Camp has provided me an opportunity to serve out of the gifts and abilities that, that God has given me. Um, it's given me an opportunity to see him change other people's lives. Um, I never grew up thinking that I would be a, a minister or missionary or whatever, but the camp life is very much feels like that um, day in and day out. And so um, it is a joy to, to walk with, with the Lord through this. And I don't, I don't know what the next season looks like, um, but I know that He's in control, and um, st sticking with him is, is, is makes it all worth it. Um, so I, I, and I think um, one thing I just want to make sure I mention, too, is that it is, it, it's not a matter of my, my passions, my desires, as much as what God's calling is. And I think each one of us here, I mean, you all have a calling. You all have an area that God has, has put you in, uh, vocationally, with school, things that he's putting inside of you. Um, He's not looking at you to be the best with that. He's looking at you to be obedient to the calling he's put in your life. And through that avenue, that's where he's going to shine in your life. That's where he's going to use you to change those in the world around, around you as well. Um, do we have time for that, that last yeah, one too? Yeah, that's um, my next question, yeah. Just wanted to show you the, the power um, of, of life on life, I guess, experience. And so here's a story of a, a young man, um, Josiah, who came to camp as a, a real little kid. And um, I'll try to talk after the story, but... Um, it's sometimes a I tear up. No. Yeah, me too. Josiah had a couple kids in middle school that were really mean to him. And one time he just said to me, he's like, Mom, Camp Sunshine is the only place. And I feel like I belong. Hi, you. I got you, no. What counselors do here is like they put, they put their love in towards me. That's what I loved about it, especially when I was a kid growing up. When he was 10 months old, I found myself as a single mom. So it was just him and I until I got married and my husband, Chris, adopted Josiah. He had his struggles fitting in at school. Dealing with bullies and dealing with all of those issues through my life. We first heard about camp when I saw a brochure at our church on the counter, and I just picked it up and saw that it was right here in town, and it was a day camp, and I asked him if he would like to go, and he said yes. He fell in love with Camp Sunshine from that first day. I remember dropping him off and they were out waving at him and that night he came home and told me that one day he wanted to be a counselor. When I first met Vess was back in 09. I remember Josiah just being a fun and witty young man. Vess was Josiah's counselor and now friend and mentor. Vess was there any moment. I could call him at any time. Josiah had decided he wanted to meet his father and Vess helped him figure out the questions to ask. He needed a mentor to do that. I had a miscarriage. 
he went to a baseball game with him just to get him out, to have something fun to do. I really believe a life well lived is a life that isn't resting in others. Paying it forward, you know. That's what a counselor is. I'm proud of Josiah for the perseverance that he shows. He never gives up. Last year was his first year as a counselor, and I watched him just begin to thrive. I've learned how to take responsibility, to mm -hmm. lead courageously, you could say. All these kids, just watching them grow up is pretty much making my life feel like there's meaning. I think they are just showing that it doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, what you look like, you are valuable because Christ died for you. And they find that here. A little emotional there. I actually know Josiah too, and it's so cool to see that he was like a camper and now he's a counselor. And that's one thing that you have built in there is, is leadership through progressing them up too. And Josiah currently is in the military, and he's serving our country. Um, we'll be actually shipping out to Germany here in the next couple months. And, um, you know, it's a, a life of a, a young man who's lost, and, and the Lord got a hold of him through camp, and now he's out serving us. <laughs> you know, so that's cool. pretty sweet. And um, on a side note, too, Vess, um, his counselor here, um, stayed in touch with over the years. He teaches out in West Virginia now, and he and his wife are expecting twins. Um, here this summer, um, awesome. but I just uh, found out yesterday that um, Vess's uh, boy is going to be named Josiah. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. cool. But so anyway, yeah. Vess is, he was there for a long time. He was there when I was out there doing video, so it's cool to see that you've had not rotation a large amount of, of good leaders too, which is really great. And that's what our students are going to get to come out and do is to be some leaders and, and things like that, right? Yep. Hey, so I'm going to change up course here a little bit, and we're going to invite the students that are going on the mission trip up here. So if you, and there's five of you, so I know who you are. <laughs> so Alyssa and Adam and Molly and Josie, and one of them is not here this morning, but she'll be here tonight for our meeting. These guys are coming on our mission trip. So this is the first time they're going to get to meet Jeff too, by the way. Hey, it, just come on up stage here for a minute. Um... They are, for first of all, if you guys want to help support us in prayer, there's some prayer cards in the purple wall or the red wall or the whatever colored wall it is with little number ones on them. And you have to add Molly to the list because I forgot. But you, I, we have, the one is representing one minute of prayer a day until camp. And so there's a little envelope out there with some stuff that they've written that they have had concerns or they've had some excitement about that we're asking for you guys to pray on. One, one minute a month, one minute a day. Uh, but you do have to add Molly's name on that because I failed miserably on that one. Uh, the second way that you guys can help us out is there's one through 100 on the, on the black boards out there. And we're going to ask that you would give either $1 all the way up to $100. Uh, and if that is done, we'll be able to send all these guys for free to camp, which I'd love to be able to do, but just to be able to cut the cost a little bit for us would be amazing as well. Uh, there's also room. I know there's some high schoolers in this room and some soon-to-be high schoolers in this room. There's room for you on this trip. I'm going to tell you right now, I want you on this trip. If you are in high school and you are in this room, I want you on this trip. Straight up. Even if you're going to graduate, I want you on this trip. If you haven't seen the amazing change that happens at camp, you will when you go. Because Jeff has said it with the Josiah story and a few other times that it's just an experience that once you get it and it gets hold of you, you change. And it's one of those things that I, I, even after I went, because I was around for a couple years before even going to Camp Sunshine. When I went to work at Camp Sunshine, it changed me. And it's an amazing experience. But what I want to do now, I was going to have the high schooler stand up here, and I'm going to have Jeff stand up here. And we're going to pray for them. And then I'm going to explain the envelope thing one more time and have the band come up after I pray for them. So I want to do something a little Pentecostal. Please don't hate me. But from where you're sitting, put your hand out. You can point at him if you want. And I'm going to pray over these guys as we uh, get ready to wrap up. Dear God, thank you so much for the ability to come together and learn about who you are, for having a guy willing to get up really early in the morning and bring his daughter and drive out here to places he has never been, talk to people he's never seen about camp and about how great of experience that is. I thank you for these high schoolers who are willing to sign up, not fully knowing what they're getting their hands into, 
until it's too late. And God, I thank you for the ability to give us strength and give us power as we get ready to prepare for this mission that we're going to go help Mr. Jeff Kaiser with. Thank you so much for your beautiful weather today. In your name I pray, amen. High schoolers, you can go sit down. These guys are the brave ones because the rest of them are just too scared. That's my opinion. Uh, I'm going to explain the envelope thing one more time. So out there, there's one through 100. If you want to give more than what's on the envelope, you can. If you want to combine envelopes, you can. But I'm not asking for a ton of money. I'm just asking for you to fill out either one through 100. And they're all out there. You can grab them and do math. I'm not good at math, so. But if you wanted to do $20 and the 20 is gone, you can grab like a 2 and an 18 or a... Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm pretty impressed. But even beyond that, we want to have all the prayer cards gone as well. And those prayer cards, just one minute a day for something that's on that list. I ask the kids to be real and be honest about what scares them and what excites them. And those are two things that we want to have prayed about for sure. Um, and Mr. Jeff Kaiser, you have come from Lincoln, right? That was an early morning, right? <laughs> a little bit of snow, a little bit of, little bit of not, not good weather. But you go around and tell the people about this camp throughout the year as well, is that correct? So you don't get to spend as much time with your family on Sunday mornings. But we are very, very grateful that you got to spend this time with us. I was very sad we didn't do five cacti, though. For those of you who don't know, there's five cacti on a windowsill and a bonsai tree living happily together in any kind of we weather. We spared you from singing and dancing today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know that song if you go to that camp because... Do you guys still do that song? Yep. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to go do five cacti. Um, <laughs> You guys don't know, it's a lot of fun. But you have a lot of fun when you go out and do this. And we really appreciate your time and really appreciate you being able to come to this. If people want to know more, you've brought flyers. Is that correct? Yep. You've, he's got some flyers as well as you have a website. Do you know the website? I forgot it. Yeah, it's campsunshinememories.org. And that's S-O-N, sunshine. Um, but yeah, so I'll, my, my beautiful daughter Brindley here and I will be around. So. Um, we'll have information if, if your student is going on the trip. I can get you a brochure so you can see more about the camp. Um, or, I mean, just a couple hours away, too, if it's a, a camp that you would want to have your family be a part of. Um, yeah, I would love to have you join. That's that way amazing. As well. And this is not the only Camp Sunshine, right? No, sir. There's, there's, you do a, a trip to Mexico, mm -hmm. and then there's one in Maryland. Mm -hmm. See, like, he just brought Maryland to Nebraska, basically. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, Jeff, I really appreciate you coming here. Band, if you guys want to come on up, I'm going to pray for Jeff one just last time as, as the band comes up. Dear God, I uh, thank you for the ability for Jeff to come here and just share his passion, his drive, and some great stories about the ministry and memories from camps and how important it really is. And God, I, I really pray that you'll just bless him and his family this week as, as they go on and just experience your joy and your calling on their life. And they've been willing to answer the call every time that you've called and just keep calling them, God. And, one last time, I just want to thank you for the ability to have friendships that come in together to where we can partner in ministries. In your name I pray, amen. That's the first I've had an opportunity to meet Jeff. I know a lot of you are like, who's Jeff Kaiser? You saw it on the sign. This is Jeff. And I'm super excited about our students being able to go to Camp Sunshine this summer. We also have our church camp we support here. And, uh, you know, this is a missions trip that our, our students are going to take. And so prayer is number one. Um, grab a prayer card. Pray for these students who are going. And, uh, and then if you can financially support, that'd be awesome as well. Let's stand. We're going to close our worship service with a song that we learned a few weeks ago prior to all the snows and just whatever um, you're the king of my heart and that is who Jesus Christ is he desires to be the king of our heart the king of our life and uh, so all through our ministries that's what we were wanting to point people to that it's not just about Central Church of Christ it's not just about Camp Sunshine it's not just about Central Church uh, Central Iowa Bible Camp or whatever it might be it's about Jesus and that he is the one that we want to lift his name. His name is the only name that needs to matter. And so let's close our worship service this morning with just this song, You're the King. I drink from, oh, he 
is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, you are good.